think it's quite unique. I think it's quite different. Another nice affordable guitar, which we're going to take a deep dive look at now. The bridge. Oh, okay, that's interesting. You can skip forward if this is a bit too dull for you. All the timestamps are in the description box, okay? It's great. You could, you know, it's worth buying just to look at, to be honest with you. Quirky, unique, stylish. It's f cool, isn't it? I mean, you know. And it's affordable. You know, how can you not buy one, really? Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Guitaristas. Today, we've got a new Gretsch. A new Gretsch from the affordable Electromatic range. This one here. It is the, if I remember correctly, the the G5. I've forgotten already. It's, it's, the, it's the G5210T. I know T stands for tremolo. No idea what the other numbers stand for. This one here, with P90s. Yeah, this is from the affordable Electromatic range. Now, I've got, um, I say affordable, and I'm gonna talk about that, because here I've got the G5230T jet, um, with the, these are the humbuckers, they're Gretsch Broadtron humbuckers. This is from 2018, I've had this for years, well, five years, isn't it? And I reviewed this on the channel a couple of years ago. I'll put a link in the description box. Great guitar, loved it. Still got it. Says it all really, doesn't it? Um, so yeah, I love this guitar. Now, the point I wanted to make was, I said affordable. This black one, I'm gonna just refer to this is the black one and this is the white one from now on. The black one cost me, in 2018, 469 sorry 429 pounds 429 english pounds i'm not sure what that is in dollars sorry guys but you can you know you can work it out <laughs> i expect 429 pounds today 5 years later this new one cost me 569 pounds so it's gone up in 5 years 140 pounds and that's you know bearing in mind that this is new you know, the, the price on the, the white one will drop a little bit in, you know, in a few months, probably. Um, and in fact, you can get this black one today for for, 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 for £499. There you go. So there's not been a massive increase in the last five years on Gretsch affordable ranges, has there? Well done, Gretsch. Um, another nice affordable guitar which we're going to take a deep dive look at now and we're going to play it and we're going to talk a bit more about it and poke it around and all that so let's get rid of the black one and get on with it so yeah p90 version um some guys on the guitaristas forum started well alerted me <laughs> to to the release of this just recently and a few of us have gotten now it's it, it's it's easy to love a guitar like this which has got the 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 full on vintage vibe and um p nineties and is affordable you know how can you not buy one really um and I think what we'll discover is that it'll probably sound pretty bloody good as well I haven't actually played this yet so I'm looking forward to doing that in a bit um let's have a look at it um how it's made and all that first off the colours this is the vintage white uh, which appealed to me. The other colours didn't really appeal to me very much, I'm afraid to say. They are uh, Petrol, which is a kind of a blue, isn't it, as far as I can tell. Amethyst, and a colour called Mako. Mako, however that's pronounced. So, yeah, vintage white for me, obviously. Uh, and it's a nice colour. It's got the, um, it's got white binding, which looks pretty cool. It's made of mahogany, this. And uh, a quick look at the back. That kind of tells us that it's three pieces of mahogany this and it's got a mahogany neck as well 
which also looks like it looks like three pieces. I think it's got a, a join there and a join there. Um, it's a chambered mahogany body. Um, we'll, we'll look under the pickups a minute and see if we can see to what extent. When I took the black one apart a few years ago, you could see it was quite considerable. So um, hopefully we'll be able to see how much chambering is on this one as well. It's got a maple cap on as well. So in that respect, it's, it's the same construction as a Les Paul. It's a similar shape, mahogany body, maple cap, although this has got significant chambering, it sh which should make it quite light, although this feels more or less Paul weight like alike. Let's, well, let's wait and find out. Here we go. So this one, eight pound ten, three point nine three kilos. So it, it's, I suppose it's it's about the weight of a a decent weight Les Paul. Okay, strings are off, let's have a closer look. Now, the neck, they call this um, a lower set. I'm not sure what that means, to be honest with you. A thin U shape. Now, I'm, I'm saying, yeah, it feels, it feels fairly thin. U, it, it's, I wouldn't have described it as a U, because it seems to be fairly uniform. I don't know, I would call it a C profile, but... Uh, I'll show you what I mean. Let's put the neck profile and the measurements on the screen now. You can see what I'm talking about. Here's the neck profile and measurements at the first fret. And here's the neck profile and measurements at the 12th fret. I suppose I can see what they mean by U shape now. It's kind of a more of a U at the shoulder, if you know what I mean. As I say, I haven't really played this yet, but it feels, it feels like a, you know, it doesn't feel uncomfortable. We'll have to see. We can talk a bit more about that later on, can't we? Um, but yeah, Indian laurel fingerboard. And as you can see, it's got these, what they call neo-classic thumbnail inlays. Yeah, that's right. Uh, medium jumbo frets, uh, which they, now the fret job looks, looks okay, actually. There's... I'd like to say there are no sharp edges at all. However, there's one sharp fret. This one. I noticed it straight away. I had a, obviously I had a strum when I got it. This one here, just catching. So I've actually got a little thing. I'm going to just give that a little rub now. There you go. I don't actually, to be honest with you, I know nothing about this stuff at all. I've never got into yet anyway fret dressing manipula i don't know what they call it even see um but i've got this thing in a little luthier set and it seems to be what i will need to just take a sharp edge off so i'm going to try live this is live because that caught my finger i mean it's an affordable good oh, there you are. better already crikey to toddle this uh, I'm unlikely to ruin this. There you go. That's all it took. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't. I did no idea if that was going to work or not, but I'm quite pleased with myself. Moving on. It's got a synthetic bone nut. Um, it's got. I have to hold that because that's going to flap around, isn't it? It's got these. Um, <laughs> that way. It's got these die cast tuners that are just there yeah, for me. I don't, well, I mean, I'm sure they work fine, but that's, I've said this before, you know, this is, that's the thing that often I mark, I mark affordable guitars down for, but I suppose that's a, you know, that's a good area of, of making savings and quite easy to change if if one chooses to. So yeah, there you go. I suppose it's, you know, it's what it is. I'm gonna take that bit of plastic off. No, I'm not. Um, 
Right, yeah, we, so we did the frets. Medium jumbo, I think I mentioned that. That's that, that's that. Now, uh, hardware, nickel hardware. Obviously, as you can see, it's got a, a Bigsby B50, which is the, it's the more affordable version of the Bigsby B5. Um, I'm not going to unbolt that and weigh it and find out why. Not today, anyway. We might do that another day, but um, not for now, because that will obviously involve unbolting a B5 from another guitar as well. Uh, I'm not going to get into that today. I imagine, I imagine, I don't know, I imagine it's, it's made from a cheaper materials, metals. Maybe you guys know. Let me know in the comments section if you do and educate us. The bridge, oh, okay, that's interesting. Now, that is interesting because it's rocking backwards and forwards and I'm not actually convinced it's meant to be doing that. Uh, it's just a standard um, tunomatic, and in fact, Gretsch have called this the Gretsch Adjustomatic bridge. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to unscrew this because I've got another reason. This is just loose on the post, isn't it? I'm not sure if it's meant to be. Have they done that on purpose? I don't know. Anyway, um, what I was going to say was, as you can see, these, what they call import bridges have got this, I think that's eight millimetre. Let's, let's just measure it and check that. I lied, it's just under six millimetre. Posts. Okay. Uh, and I think, they, so I think they would call that a six mil post. And if you wanted to change it for look i've got this roller bridge in my box of tricks that i've had for a while i think i inherited it with a bigsby b5 that i've got um if you wanted to put a roller bridge on this guitar which is probably the first upgrade that a lot of you might want to do we're going to find out if you can because i've got these or because because the holes in this are, are, are smaller than the import bridge that comes with the guitar. So you need to conversion posts, which I happen to have set here. So oh, it's double bagged. <laughs> I really should prepare this stuff, shouldn't I? Right, here we go. Smaller version, six mil. So what's what do they call this then? Um, they call that yeah four mil. Yeah, you can see that it's four mil. Six mil post, four mil post. Four mil post goes in the roller bridge that I've got here. So let's see if that will fit. You can skip forward if this is a bit too dull for you. All the timestamps are in the description box, okay? You know the score. Uh, if this is, you know, you want to skip forward and find out what, what it sounds like, for instance, go for it. I won't mind. Right. Let's see if this conversion post goes in. It does, um, because I specifically bought conversion posts that have the metric thread. If you're gonna buy stuff like this, there's there's a few things to take into account, such as that. You know, the thread's got to be the same as the import, unless you change the the bushings that it screws into as well, which you can do. I mean, you can do anything if you want. I'll put a link to where I got this. These are ABM two five four A N forward slash L M eight. Adapter studs, nickel long bridge posts, four millimeter to M8 pair. 
I'll put a link in the description box. And then the roller bridge will pop straight on. I mean, you might even, you probably can get a, having, yeah, having said all that, you can probably get, just get a roller bridge with M8. No, that's not M8, is it? Six mil. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. That's a little diversion for you. It's still quite wobbly. I'm not, I don't know about that. Hmm. Anyway, there you go. Let's move on. I'm putting the original back on for now. I'm going to save those um, upgrade pieces for something else. Maybe for this later, but for now, we're going to put it back to standard for the test, okay? There you go. So the other hardware on this, you can see it's got, well, it's got a master volume. This has apparently got a treble bleed circuit on the master volume. Uh, it's got uh, one master tone and two volumes. I'm not sure which are which uh, off the top of my head. Uh, and these are nice knurled G knobs. Yeah, that's what they call them, isn't it? <laughs> G arrow control knobs. And it's got a, a metal switch tip as well, which is pretty cool. Um, oh, yeah, and the other great thing about these is the um, adjuster. The strap adjusters, which are screw in metal, knurled, lovely thing. So you, you literally unscrew these. They're locking, locking strap locks. Look, they're a really cool thing. I don't know why more people don't do that, apart from the fact that they're fiddly and I nearly dropped it on the floor. Put it back. <laughs> and they're called. Gretsch knurled strap retainer knobs. So there you go. There's a lot of knurling going on, isn't there? Okay, um, let's take some pickup readings and then have a look underneath them. All controls on 10. Let's have a look at the bridge P90 first. That's um, reading 8.6, 8.60, kilo ohms. And the inductance is 6.35 Henry's. And then onto the neck, uh, we've got 7.71 K. And the inductance is 5.37 Henry's. So, yeah, they're, they're sort of um, what you'd expect, I suppose, for P90s. Nothing, you know, unusual about those readings at all, really. So um, the middle reading, just for the sake of it, is 4.10 kilo ohms. So there you go. Let's uh, have a look underneath them. I don't think I'll need to remove the pick guard. As you can see, it's kind of floating like a Les Paul one. It looks to me like we just have to... S These are the ones that just screw directly into the body. All right, it's coming up, it's raising up. So there's obviously some springs or or foam or some such like underneath to aid adjustment, which obviously shows you you can, it feels quite springy that, you can raise them up if you wish. I'm guessing springs. Yep. There you go. Uh, right, yeah, it's got, it's got springs and it's got foam rubber. And that's what it looks like. Let's get a little bit closer on that so you can see better. Yeah, you can't see the, you can't see the chambering on this one. This one, as you can see, it's it's got a P90 shaped hole, and um, nothing's going to fit in there except a P90. So you can't you can't well or, or anything that's the same size as a P90 because I'm I'm guessing I'm making an assumption that this is a normal size P90. Um, let's measure it and find out. 
Oh, it's about 86 mil long. And 35 mil wide. So here's a standard to Gibson P90 that. 86, yeah. Thirty-five, same size as the one in our white Gretsch. Let's have a look under this one and see if we can see any chambering. No. <laughs> there you go. As I was thinking about that, I'm thinking it's in the control cavity. That's where we can see the chambering. We'll have a look, shall we? Well, there you go. There's there's nothing more to see there. It, it's a nice, neat job. Um, and uh, <laughs> it's got paint on it and springs and foam. That's going back. There you go. If you thought I was imagining it, <laughs> I think you can see that. Can stick my hand right around in there and the same there and there. So, here I'll try and show you some closer shots of those here. Significant chambering. There's no markings on the, the tone and volume pots at all. There doesn't appear to be any capacitors. Um, in the master volume, you can see there's a there's something going on there's a cap there and as they said in the specs that's got a treble bleed on it so that's presumably what that is and then switch just a fairly it's a fairly cheap looking switch uh to my eyes but there you go that's it and then yeah there's lots of lots of holes <laughs> leading off into various directions so so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to put these control plates back on I'm going to put a new set of strings on and and then we'll plug it in and we'll and we'll see what it sounds like. Cool. See you in the next bit. Here we are. That's what it sounds like unplugged. Got a nice spank to it. I'm plugged into the Princeton 65 as always on the ball today. I have a soul food and I have a rat pedal and I will show you a via Crocs cam if I tread on them as usual. Okay. We're going to start with um, just the bridge pickup. I'll roll it off a little bit. That might. The neck.
So they're all dimed now. And that's the middle position. To my woolly ears, it sounds a little bit woolly. Um, but nice, you know, not not unpleasant. And that's obviously back on the the treble pickup, if you like, or the bridge pickup. And on the neck pickup. Which sounds, it sounds quite dark, but nice. Let's see if the, um, let's see how the controls work. Actually, so this is the tone control. This is the volume for the bridge. This is the volume for the neck. This is the master volume. Can you hear that? It's earthing through the switches. I suppose that's quite normal, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> let's get on with it. Um, yeah, what was I doing? Seems all right. Those volume controls seem to work. This is the master volume. The volume doesn't seem to do very much at all. Yeah. Doesn't really, does it? I wonder if that's something to do with the, the, the treble bleed and stuff. It's just kind of confusing it or something. I can't see how that would be much use at all, really. Okay, uh, tone. Yeah, well, it doesn't do a great deal. I mean, it goes dark, so it will get us to a nice place. much in between. So I'd say the volume controls on the pickups seem fine, the master volume and the tone, three out of ten from me. Right, let's play something. What should we play today? <laughs> Thank you. 
That was the Gretsch G5210T. Did I get that right even? Yeah, I did for once. It's quite a thing. It's quite a thing. It's quite boisterous, isn't it? I mean, I know I added rat there and uh, the stuff, so you didn't get a lot of clean. I did try and do a fair amount of clean this week, but I had some issues with the tuning, which I'll, well, I'll talk about because it was a bit of a shame, really. I tried to do lots of clean to show that it jangles. You know, I thought it was a Gretsch. It's got to have that, that sort of, you know, jangle, for want of a better word. Um, I'm not sure it does jangle like a traditional Gretsch. It's more Billy Duffy than Chet Atkins, if you know what I mean. It does clean up, in spite of the fact that half of the controls are not very good. But these volumes on the pickups work. And although all you can really hear is it's pushing the amp. It's pushing. These P90s are pushing as hard as, as anything we've had here lately. You know, they're proper boisterous. <laughs> They do clean up. And I tried to show a little bit of that. Oh, here's a tiny little clip here. get very far with this stuff because the tuning was wandering you know fairly regularly um which was a nuisance so i had to trash a lot of the stuff that i was playing this week so what we've ended up with is god knows what but it's you know it's it's not there's not a lot of clean there's not a lot of clean but that was my excuse really i don't know it was probably a combination of the tuners, I mean, I don't like these. They didn't inspire confidence. And I was using them a lot, trying to trying to tweak it, and they didn't inspire confidence. Whether or not it was the the bridge or the the Bigsby, or maybe it's not lined up, or the nut, it, it's hard to tell. It's not always the case with these scratches. The other one that I've got that I showed you earlier, the, I don't remember any issues with that at all, or any other Gretsch, for that matter, that I've had with the Bigsby. But this one, for some reason, I didn't really want to play ball so that was a shame uh, but that's the sort of stuff that can be fixed on a guitar like this and is probably it's probably still worth it you know it's an affordable guitar it looks great it's quite a unique sounding guitar this i think the adding p90s to this gretch you know sort of chambered semi-chambered uh or quite significantly chambered body i think it gives it a special source I think it's quite unique. I think it's quite different. I think this is quite different to any of the other P90 guitars that we've played here re recently. You couldn't compare this like for like with the Les Pauls that we had last week, for instance. It's a different beast, uh, and it's a lovely and it's a lovely looking beast, isn't it? Look, I mean, look at it. It's great. You could, you know, it's worth buying just to look at. To be honest with you. Um, I think what we'll do, I think we'll keep this hanging around and, and we'll muck around with it and uh, try and try and investigate w what this tuning thing is because um, I'm sure it's, well, I know it's quite a, a sort of a common thing on the more affordable Bigsby Tram guitars. Um, so I think it's probably worth looking into and, uh, and having a modify. And actually, oh, it just, just reminds me, I just wanted to mention that earlier, while I had this pickup out, I showed you the route there, but I also grabbed this, I grabbed the other one out and I, and I investigated under this pickup because this is a non-standard size humbucker. And I wanted to look and see what the route was like under this pickup ring. I can't include all that stuff in YouTube film because the algorithm will, will go... I can't, I can't get away with too much nerdy stuff in YouTube. I've got to try and be consistent and, and pander, 
pander to the algorithm. So I'm going to cut a little extra, including what that looks like under the pickup and, and what pickup options you could use for upgrades. That's the point. You know, if you want to put a standard size humbucker in that, can you? There's going to be an extra up on the TV channel probably this weekend. There's the link. If you're if you need that sort of extra nerdy nonsense from me, that's where you'll find it. There's loads of extra stuff on there. Okay, so a little plug and a little mention really that um, because I was talking to some of the guys on the guitaristers forum about what pickups might fit that, and I just wanted to mention it so that they know it is coming. Okay, and you can go and check it out as well if you want. There you go. There's a the link again. Well, it's not a link. It's it's a web address. It's all it's all online. You should check it out. It's good. There you go. That was a nice plug, wasn't it? Moving on. <laughs> so to summarise, another great, affordable, Gretsch, electromatic, quirky, unique, stylish. It's fucking cool, isn't it? I mean, you know, uh, it's a it's a great guitar. It's worth it's worth um, getting to know. I you know dealing with the quirks of it. And as I said, they're not all like this. Or if I didn't say that, I should say, they're not all like this. The black one, I've never had any tuning problems with that when I've played it. I don't know why I have with this one. It might be the nut. It might be these tuners. Uh, it, but whatever it is, it can be fixed, and I think it's worth it for a, for a guitar like this. I like it. Yeah, you should get one. You should get one. Great, you they're killing it, really, aren't they? I mean, they always have been, uh, really. I mean, they don't get enough love from me. And to be honest with you, because because the shine's going off of Epiphone a little bit for me lately, I'm going to probably get some more Gretches in because I haven't um, I haven't tried their their nice hollow bodies. You know, I need an orange hollow body, don't I? I'm gonna yeah, I'll get some more Gretches in, I think, and and we'll muck around with this, and we'll see if we can do some upgrades on this. Uh, maybe it might even be on the on the TV channel because, as I say, I have to be careful on YouTube um, because we are slave to the algorithm. Slave to the algorithm. I should write a song called that, shouldn't I? Slave to the algorithm. Um, if you, you probably have no, what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> Just ignore me. I'm look. I'm going to go because I I don't know what I'm talking about either. So I am going to go. And I'll be back next week with something else. Now I'm going to try, and uh, I'm going to try and get the Telecaster, the overdue Telecaster comparison film done for next week. That's my plan. Um, you never know if something else is going to come along and, as a diversion or an excuse not to do that because it's quite a detailed film that. But um, whatever, well, whatever it will be, will be. That's what they say, isn't it? Whatever will be, will be. So come back here, same time, same place next week, and find out. I look forward to it. See you then, I hope. Cheers for now. Ta-da.